Are you looking for a travel trailer that weighs under 3,500 pounds GVWR? Well, stick around, folks. We found some awesome trailers. You're going to want to check these out. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. And if this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we also invite you to check out our website called rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing there too. Now today we're going to be taking a look at travel trailers that weigh less than 3,500 pounds GVWR. They're small, lightweight, easy to tow with a wide variety of vehicles. So without any further ado, let's get started on our reviews. This travel trailer is the Jayco J Flight model number 154BH. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 2,615 pounds a cargo carry capacity of 885 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 3,500 pounds. It measures in at just 18 feet long and it can sleep up to four people. When you first walk inside this travel trailer on the right hand side, you'll notice a big spacious dinette, which also serves as your bed. Then you come into the kitchen area. And then on my right, we have bunks. And just behind me here is where the bathroom is located. Now, when I first walk into this travel trailer, the first thing that comes to my mind is, wow, this is a perfect camper for a beginner. It's small, it's light, it doesn't have any slide outs, and uh, it'd be very, very easy to get started camping in a smaller camper this size. Now, on my right-hand side is where the dinette is located, and this is one of the bigger dinettes that you'll find in a camper, and the table's a little bit low to my liking, but once you're in here, I mean, you could easily sit four people in here very, very comfortably. I mean, you really won't be banging elbows with your neighbor for sure. It's possible you could get a fifth person here, but I would say four very, very comfortably. Now, this also serves as a bed in here. And so the table will drop down and the dinette itself will convert over into a bed. And if you do that, let's see what size bed you will end up with. So if we measure across, you're at 80 inches. And then the width of this is about 55 inches. So just shy of a residential size queen bed, but it is considered a full size bed. Is that right, honey? Not a twin, but a full. Right. I got it right. There we go. Now, the another nice thing about this setup is this table is a standalone table. So you can move it however you want when it's not in use. You could even take the table and put it outside and use it there if you would like to. If it were me, I would probably just get the bed set up. And if it's a nice weekend, leave it set up as a bed the whole time. So you're not making it and unmaking it every day, twice a day. Um, but anyway, it's a great little setup for a beginner camper. Now up top here, you've got a big open storage area all the way across that you can access through these two doors. And then there are a couple of USB ports, but they're a little bit behind this cushion, but they're still available. So if you're sitting here at your dinette, you need to recharge your phone or even plug in your computer, you can do that. There's also a receptacle on the side of this cabinet, which is very handy as well. So you can plug in your computers. And then finally, there's storage under one of the dinette benches here. You can lift up the plywood underneath and access that entire area. In addition to that, there's an outlet on this dinette bench as well. So you can plug in from both sides very, very conveniently. So right across from your dinette area is, I guess we would call this a bit of an entertainment area. You could mount your TV up here. All of your receptacle and cable pre-wiring is all done for you here. So that works out very, very conveniently. Below that, you've got a little bit of open storage and then you have even more storage in this cabinet. Now the kitchen in here is very compact, but efficient. I like the way it's laid out. Up top here, you have a nice big space for storage items. Then you've got a regular microwave oven here. Down below that, you have a two burner cooktop stove. And then next to that, it's got a small kitchen sink. I wish it was a little bit bigger and maybe deeper. It'd be hard to wash larger pots and pans in here, but it certainly serves its purpose. And then you have all this countertop space, which is really fantastic. You could put a coffee pot, 
or a toaster up here and there's a receptacle right around the side so you can plug in everything very very easily now the refrigerator down here opens up and it's got a cool looking blue light inside of there it does have a separate freezer area up top which is very convenient and then next to that you've got storage underneath of your kitchen sink now just past the burners and the microwave you've got a pantry cabinet in here now these shelves are not adjustable which is unfortunate but you've got plenty of room for all of your storage there's even another cabinet down below for additional storage and then i see susan wrote a note it's been a long day at the maryland rv show now just across from the kitchen and in the very back of this camper is where the bunks are located now these bunks are whoopsie do my tape measure bent so it's about 76 inches by about 30 inches so you could sleep two adults here or two kids either way now the weight rating on these bunks is 300 pounds but i want to bring something up about bunks just because the weight rating says 300 pounds does not mean you can put 300 pounds of stuff on here all the time. The rating that they show you means that's the sleeping capacity. So if someone's laying here sleeping, whatever, they could weigh up to 300 pounds and be fine. But you can't store 300 pounds of stuff on these bunks while you're driving up and down the road. Because as you know, trailer's going to be bouncing. And all the stuff you store on these bunks is going to be bouncing. So you can really only store about 200 pounds worth of stuff to allow for that bouncing to take place because it could break your bunk if you fully load it up to the 300 pound max limit. So be aware of that when you're looking at bunk bed capacities while you're shopping around. Now, these bunks have three or four of all of the important elements that we look for in bunk beds. They each have their own light. They each have their own window for natural light. One of the bunks has USB ports and the other has a receptacle. So it works out really well. If the kids are up here, they can plug in with their tablets or phones, watch YouTube videos, whatever they're into. They have the power source that they need for that. And then finally, down below the bottom bunk on one half of the bunk, there is additional storage space. So here I am in the very back of this camper, right next to the bunks, and this is where the bathroom is located back here. Now this bathroom is a little different than most that we see because it has a little bathtub in it. So if you've got little toddlers and you need to throw them in the bathtub, well, boom, here you go. It's actually a decent sized tub for a little kid. Now, while you're standing in this shower, as you guys know, my height is 5'11", but inside, when you're standing in here in the skylight, you've got about six feet, eight inches of headroom. The normal headroom throughout the entire camper is about six feet, six inches. So for your taller folks, this camper could work out pretty well for you. Now, while you're in here, you've got multiple places for shampoo and soap in each of the corners. The uh, shower nozzle is a very nice setup. It's, it's a nice big sprayer and it's removable so you can use it as you need. Now this one does come with a shower curtain and more and more we're seeing the manufacturers getting away from the shower curtains and using retractable shower doors instead. We'd sure like to see that in here. We bought a retractable shower door for our Class C. I think it costs what, 60, 70 bucks? Like and they're not expensive. Maybe a little higher. Maybe 80 or 90. but. They're less than a hundred bucks. So you could put a you could put one in here yourself. You can order them on Rec Pro and uh, we'll pop it in here yourself. They're really not that hard to install. Uh, outside of the shower and tub is where the commode is located. And I will not pass the elbow test on this side, but I will pass it on that side. One other thing to note in this bathroom is that there is no sink in here. And so you'd have to wash your hands, I guess, in the kitchen sink. Now this is a debate that rages on when people watch our videos. Let us know in the comments below what you think about either having a sink or not having a sink in your bathroom and if that's okay or can you use the kitchen sink or not? Like, is it gross not to have a sink in here? I don't know. The debate rages on. It also rages in, on in our private Facebook group called RV Camping for Newbies. So if you'd like to join that group and jump in on the argument there, you're more than welcome to do that too. This travel trailer is the Little Guy Micro Max CT. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 1,860 pounds, a very impressive cargo carry capacity of 1,640 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 3,500 pounds. It measures in at 15 feet, 11 inches long, and it can sleep two people. 
When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you'll find the bathroom and single dinette. Then we wrap on around through the kitchen area. And finally, we're back here in the living area, sleeping area and dinette. Well, when you first walk into this travel trailer, well, I guess you know it's a teardrop, right? It's got the low ceiling height and it drops on the two ends, but it also has a really great fit and finish in here. These are super high quality models. We think they're really, really fantastic. Now on my left hand side here, I guess you kind of start with the kitchen area, right? Because the microwave oven is mounted right here. Down below that, you've got a little bit of open storage with this cargo netting. Plus you can reach in from the end here. And then you've got all of your controls, your radio controls, your fuses, and down below, even more storage. Now, straight across from the entry door is where you'll find the kitchen area. And first of all, you've got this really neat sink setup. It's got a cover on top, which gives you more countertop space. But when you lift the cover, then you've got this really creative dish drain design. And then when you pop these out, there you go. You've got a little single bowl sink in here so you can wash your dishes, wash your hands, whatever you need to do. Now over top, it's got this really good size gooseneck faucet. It does have a separate sprayer that you can pull down and wash your dishes. So that's a very nice feature. And then right next to that, we have a two burner propane stove. Now in this particular case, I really do wish they took the burners and turned them front to back and got a smaller stove in here because that would give you more countertop space between your cooktop and your sink. And I just feel like, you know, it really needs a little bit more countertop space in here. Now down below your cooktop is where your refrigerator is located. And it's a small compact fridge, but it does have a separate place where you can make some ice cubes. Now down below your kitchen sink is another cabinet that opens up and as you can see you have lots of storage underneath there. This false drawer here is just an access panel to underneath of the cabinetry to get into some of the electronics in the unit. One more thing to note in the kitchen over my shoulder here is a little bit more open storage area above your two burner stove. So just next to the kitchen sink area, there is a small single dinette up here in the front of this camper. You could use this as a little workstation or whatever. Now, the reason I'm holding the dinette table is because we're at an RV show and the little pole that connects from the table to the fitting on the wall, we can't seem to find it. I guess the, the dealer must have taken the, the support posts and hidden them so they don't get lost from people walking through the RVs and moving them around. But anyway, you would have a table here that you could use. Now to my left, you've got a couple of cup holders up here. You also have a receptacle, USB ports, and a 12 volt charger port up here. So if you wanted to sit here and use this as a workstation, everything's here that you need for your computer or any other electronics that you have. And the other thing to point out is that you've got this extra countertop space up here. And since there's not really a receptacle around the kitchen counter area itself, if you wanted to set up a coffee pot or a toaster oven or anything along those lines, you could plug it in right here and make use of that area as well. One last feature to note up here in the kitchen area is this drawer that pulls out from underneath of the dinette seat. Now it actually pulls out this way and then you can pull it over this way, I guess just to have better access to it. I really don't know why they've designed it to slide two ways, but eh, it's kind of neat, worth showing. Now here I am in the back of this camper and this area actually has three different uses. First of all, it's set up as a couple of comfy couches back here and they're nice and big and spacious. I mean, you could easily sit four people back here nice and comfortably, but it's really meant for two. Uh, it also serves as your dinette. And just like in the front of the camper, the post that connects from the table to the dinette bench below me is, we can't seem to find it. I'm sure the dealer moved it. But anyway, your dinette would sit back here and two people could easily enjoy sitting here and having dinner together. Now, the third function for this area is that it also sets up as a nice big bed back here. But before I set up the bed and show you how that works, I just want to point out a couple features back here. First of all, the unit does have an air conditioning unit, which is mounted down below. So it's a really weird spot for an air conditioner. I've never seen one mounted like that before, but it's out of the way 
and it'll blow into the camper and it'll certainly keep you nice and cool. Another thing to note is that underneath each of the dinette booths, there is just a little bit of storage under there that you can have access to on both sides. And then at the very back of the camper, these little doors slide back and forth and you can access some additional storage all the way across the back behind these little doors. One more thing to note is that the TV is mounted just behind where the microwave was when we walked in from the front door. And so that's a great spot. You can take the TV and pull it out at an angle. So if you're laying here in bed or sitting here on the couch, you can watch TV back here and enjoy a little quiet time. One last thing to point out is that there is an outlet down here below the dinette bench. And that's a great feature to have back here because that way when you go to bed at night or you're sitting back here in the evening and you wanna break out your laptop or charge your phone, you have access to plug in anything that you need to. Now I've gone ahead and lowered the dinette table and moved all the cushions from the sofa position into the bed position. And when you do that, you end up with a RV or short queen size bed, which is 76 inches by 60 inches wide. Now, I think I mentioned at the beginning of this tour that there is a bathroom in here and it's located under this countertop right here. This just pops up, folds on back. This door pops out. This one pops open and you have a cassette toilet right here for your convenience. Now, you're gonna to wanna to make sure, I guess, you're in your camper by yourself when you're using the bathroom, or hey, if it's late at night, you need to get up, use the restroom, at least you have one inside your camper. Now, there's a couple features outside of this camper that are really cool as well. There's a mount here for a TV that you could put right on the side of your camper. You also have some speakers out here to get a nice sound going. And then, of course, you have a receptacle out here to plug in and you have USB or uh, HDMI and a cable outlet. And finally, you could even mount a little table out here because there's another spot where you can grab the small dinette table from inside and mount it outside the door. This travel trailer is the A-Liner Grand Escape ST. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 1,700 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 800 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of just 2,500 pounds. It measures in at 14 feet long and it can sleep two people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, you walk right into the kitchen area on your left and on your right hand side is where the bathroom is located. In the back of this camper, which is really the front of this camper, this is where your bed, dinette, and living area are located. Now, when you first walk in here, I felt right away, and Susan did too when we walked in here, we haven't seen this camper before, but it has a very efficient use of space going on in here. I mean, it's, it's got a good feel. It's less than 15 feet long. So it's got everything you need in a very small and compact space. Now, first of all, on your left-hand side, when you walk in, this is where your kitchen is located. Up top here, you've got a microwave oven. And then next to that, you've got some storage space and then even more open storage to the right of that. And then on top of your kitchen countertop, you've got a two burner stove and the lid pops down so you can use this as extra countertop space. And then of course, you have your sink here with your flip up faucet, a decent sized sink, and it works well because you can put the top down and create more countertop space that way as well. I also wanna note, on the right hand side here is a receptacle so you can plug in if you want to put a coffee pot or toaster up here, anything like that. Now you do have a drawer in here and then there's another cabinet down below that for some additional storage. And then the refrigerator is located right here as well. And although it's small and on the compact side, oops, here we go. You can pull this down and that'll get you to the part of the freezer where you can make some ice cubes. Now here I am sitting at the dinette table that's in here and two people could easily sit across from each other and enjoy a meal. You've got your little TV right here so you can watch a little bit of TV and relax. And then to the left of me on each side, there is a storage cabinet so you can stow away some of your clothes and belongings. Now in this cabinet, there's also a receptacle and a couple of USB ports but you'd have to run the cables out and sort of close your door on the cables. So if it was me, I'd probably drill a little hole up through here and put a grommet in there and then I can pull my cables through, 
keep it nice and neat and have access to electricity or USB ports because I would probably be using the kitchen table as my workspace. Um, now, you can also convert this. It, it, the way it's set up now, it's kind of like twin beds in here. One person sleeps there, one person sleeps here. Your feet go underneath of this cabinet and your head would be up here. And that way you can lay in bed in the evening, watch TV and relax. Now, the other thing that you can do is these are actually set up like gaucho beds. So you would simply pull this bottom forward. I'm not gonna remove the table and all that. This side does the same thing. It pulls in and then you set up all your cushions and you make one gigantic bed in here. So if you did that, you would end up with a space that is about 77 inches long and gosh, about 72 inches wide. So it would kind of be considered like a short king bed in here. It's really a big spacious area. If you leave it set up in the twin bed format, you would each have about just under two feet for your side of the twin bed. So I would imagine most folks are gonna pull these together to make a nice big king size bed in here. Now, if you don't know what a gaucho bed is, I suggest you head on over to rvblogger.com Hit the little search magnifying glass up in the corner and type in the word gaucho and you'll find our article called what is a gaucho bed and you can learn all about that it's very popular setup especially in camper vans but some smaller travel trailers make use of the same style of bed so here i am in the bathroom and i'm standing in the shower because the bathroom and the shower are all one in the same in this travel trailer this is considered a wet bath what a wet bath is, is you've got your shower and your commode all in one room and the entire floor is your shower base. So when you take a shower in here, everything gets wet and then you need to kind of dry up the bathroom a little bit before you want to, you know, use your toilet after, you know, during the daytime or whatever. Uh, we have some friends that have a casita camper and she actually um, sets a fan up in her bathroom and that way after she's done taking a shower the fan keeps the air blowing and everything sort of just dries up on its own now um, as you guys know i'm 5'11 and i can't even stand up straight in here it's a pretty big step up into the shower i would guess um, you know about a 12 inch step up but the shower is a good eight or nine inches off the floor and so it really impacts your your head height in here so your total head space inside the shower is only five feet eight inches so if you're taller than that like i am i'm 5'11 you've got to crouch down in here a bit um, but when you're in here you'll notice that really all you have is a shower sprayer it's a very basic setup and when you're sitting on the commode in here uh, there you go there's no elbow room it's just basics but it gets the job done that's for sure one more detail to note about the a-liner toilet in this model this is a cassette toilet let us know which one of these travel trailers you liked most and why down in the comments below you know a lot of manufacturers read the comments in our youtube videos to learn how to modify and make their trailers better so let us know what you think maybe a manufacturer will see your comment and make a trailer just that much better and if you'd like to check out more campers that weigh less than 3,500 pounds, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.